Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dreamfall Chapters! Dreamfall Chapters is the long-awaited sequel to Dreamfall, which was originally released in 2006. The ending to Dreamfall left us with a lot of questions. Did Wadi Corp win? How was the Dreamer connected to the Azadi Tower? What did the Undreaming do to Brian Westhouse? What happened to the White Dragon? Will Zoe wake up from her co coma? And perhaps most importantly, is April Ryan really dead? Answers to those questions were not soon forthcoming, as Funcom seemed uninterested in actually creating the planned sequel. It was not until late 2012 that Ragnar Tornquist, the original creator of The Long Was Journey and Dreamful, and his new studio Red Thread Games were able to license the rights to create the sequel, and funded it with grants from the Norwegian Film Institute as well as a Kickstarter uh, campaign, which yours truly of course backed. Dreamful Chapters was released in an episodic format, with the first part released in October of 2014, and the story was finally completed with a fifth part in June of 2016. So, are all those questions I mentioned answered? Let's find out! Now normally, um, when doing a game that's a sequel to a big story-driven game like this, you are probably used to me doing a recap video, but this time I don't have to, because there's one built into the game. So let's watch that first. Every story has a beginning and an end. This is how our story began. The year is 2219. In Casablanca, a young woman named Zoe Castillo is drawn into a conspiracy when her journalist ex-boyfriend Reza goes missing. Zoe tries to track him down and discovers that Reza is working on a story about a new entertainment device that enables lucid dreams. But this device also opens a back door into people's minds allowing Watticorp, the makers of the Dream Machine, to monitor thoughts and steal memories. When Zoe is forcibly connected to a Dream Machine, she finds herself in another world. Arcadia, the world of magic. Zoe arrives in the middle of an armed conflict between the Azadi, who have conquered the city of Mercuria, and the magical peoples who are being eradicated by the invaders. She soon learns of a connection between the Dream Machine and the Azadi. Someone is attempting to steal humanity's dreams in order to reshape reality. When Zoe wakes from her vision, she tracks the Dream Machine conspiracy back to the Watikorp headquarters and helps sabotage the project. But before Zoe can tell the world what is going on, she's poisoned by a woman claiming to be her long-deceased mother. Now in a coma, Zoe travels to a strange and desolate place. Story time. Here Zoe has the power to shape dreams and help those who are trapped in night terrors escape, but unable to escape herself. Meanwhile, in Arcadia, the world of magic, we follow the apostle Kian Nirvane as he journeys from the Azadi homelands to the occupied city of Mercuria on a sacred mission to assassinate the leader of the magical resistance. But as Kian learns more about the conflict between his people and the Magicals, he begins to lose faith in his mission. He finally tracks down the leader of the rebels, a woman named April Ryan, but refuses to kill her. As punishment, Kian is imprisoned and sentenced to death, and April is brutally cut down. All right. Well, that was a very brief um, recap, but it does the job of at least reminding you who the main characters were. It doesn't really go over any of the events of the original Longer's Journey, unfortunately, but I do still have a recap video I made for that, so if you need any help with remembering that, you can check that out. So, let's actually get started. And, um... If you've played the entire game, you can actually choose what book to start at, but because I restarted the game before I started recording, it does not let me progress to any of the later book books, probably because it doesn't know what choices I've made. There are actually choices to make in this game. We'll get to that. So we're going to start at the beginning, which is always the best place to start. And uh, I don't care. The game also shows you what other people have chosen. You can do this while you're making the choice, or you will uh, see it 
later at the end of every uh, book or episode. And that's all fine. And yes, it auto-saves. There's no way to manually save, which is the worst thing ever if you're trying to make a Let's Play. There are two worlds. Our world, the world of science, and Arcadia, the world of magic. Dreams connect these parallel worlds, but a dark force threatens the very fabric of dreams. Zoe Castillo holds the power to shape dreams and save us from the undreaming, but she is trapped in a place called the Storytime. Kian Alvane is destined to play an important role in the war to come, but he faces execution for treason against his own people. They are both about to be reborn. A new story is about to begin. Their paths will intersect, and at the end of their journey, they will face the Thief of Dreams.
They say that every story has a beginning and an end, but that isn't always the case. Some stories simply stop. My name is Zoe Castillo. I'm dying. I've been in a coma for over a year. The doctors don't believe I'll ever wake up again. My mother did this to me. She put me here so that I wouldn't be able to tell my story, so that she could keep her secrets. It worked. The world is addicted to dreams, to dream time. It's just entertainment. They have no idea what the dream machine is really for and what it's doing to the world. They don't know that someone is stealing their dreams, using them to reshape reality. So, if I'm in a coma, how am I talking to you? The thing is, my body may be here in a hospital, but my mind. My mind is elsewhere. This is the story time. It's the place between. And it's my home now. This place where all stories begin and end. Including mine. Well, that's quite the beginning. I guess the game wanted to get the most important question out of the way first. I mean, I'm no medical doctor, but I'm pretty sure that setting someone's corpse on fire is a good way to ensure that they are really, really dead. And stay dead, too. Then again, Arcadia is a world of magic, so who knows? And now we are here with Zoe, who... You may have already noticed, sounds nothing like she did in the previous game. Also doesn't really look like she did in the previous game, but you'll get used to it. They had to recast quite a few of the uh, voice actors for this game. Fortunately, not all of them, so we will be hearing a few familiar voices too. Zoe, however, is not one of them. And yes, last we saw Zoe, she was in a coma, in story time, talking to that weird looking guy, telling her story. The same guy that we also saw when Brian Westhouse was briefly in story time at the beginning of Dreamfall. And it's definitely a weird looking place, and we can see, I guess, ourselves out in the real world. Some kind of projection, or maybe her mind is able to see what's going on in the real world. Some kind of out-of-body experience, to the extreme, I guess. Pretty strange to see yourself laying in a coma. And the game is telling me how to play, which I already know. Sleeping Beauty. Coma as a fashion statement? No, oh, that's awful. But I honestly do look better on my deathbed. Um, really? I think so. Kind of looking pale there. I can use V to zoom in on things, which I will be doing occasionally, and probably will forget to do most of the time. I don't know if that's how I actually look out there, or if it's just wishful thinking. Everything in here is made of dreams. I guess we'll never know. It's odd. Like looking into a mirror and seeing a stranger. That's me. Beautiful stranger. That's me. Beautiful stranger. Quite a few things here have uh, multiple reactions when you look at them. 
That was taken when Reza and I were still dating. Feels like a different lifetime. And, well, it sort of was. Yeah, that was quite a while ago. That's how this whole thing got started, us trying to search for Reza. You may notice the UI of this game is a little bit different than the pre predecessor, and that's a good thing. It's not anywhere near as horrible as that one was. Reza visits a lot. Talks to me for hours. It's good. It's good. Like, we're reconnecting. Hmm. But didn't you say in the last game that it's not the real Reza? Did you change your mind, or did you forget about that? But then, sometimes, I don't know why, it's like... He's a stranger. Like, someone's wearing his skin. Or, I guess you didn't forget about that. Oh, that's... Oh, that's weird and sick and probably all in my head. Still, I have this vivid memory of the first time he came by and what popped into my head was, that's not Reza. I don't know. It was probably because I thought I'd lost him. I'd spent weeks looking for him. It's how I ended up here, sort of. Maybe seeing him just triggered a lot of feelings. It's possible, I guess. Or maybe it was really not the real Reza. Sometimes when Reza talks to me, he says he wants to try again. With us. If I wake up, I want to give it a shot. I wasn't totally fair to him the first time around. Yes, you do not see their lips moving during the uh, inner monologues. They're not really just talking out loud. Interesting markings Zoe has on her face here. Reza and me, in Cape Town, a lifetime ago. By the way, if you hear any noise in the background, it is probably my cat, or possibly my wife. People keep bringing flowers. So... funereal. Well, you are on your deathbed, so... I guess that makes sense. I know they mean well. But my hospital room is beginning to look like a memorial. Wonder if anyone even asks themselves whether I'm allergic to flowers. There's just no consideration for the comatose. Wonder if anyone even asks themselves whether I'm allergic to flowers. There's and just it's no Wonkers, for the comatose. everyone's favorite gorilla-looking thing. Wonkers, my old Wattilla. I don't know why they brought him to the hospital, but I'm glad they did. He probably wanted to be Wonkers there. Wonkers watches over me, night and day. He may be just a toy bot, there's something comforting about that. Faithful old Wonkers. It's nice that there's so many um, lines of dialogue about everything here, mainly because they help you kind of remember things from the previous game. I don't know if the chart is accurate or just a dream construct, but it doesn't look good. That line should be pointing up, not down. Oh, is she getting worse? That's not good. Take a skateboard to that line. You'd build up a lot of speed. <laughs> sure. According to my chart, I won't be around for long. Well, I guess we'd better find a way to do something about that. I don't know if the chart is accurate or just a dream construct, but it doesn't look good. That line Let's should be pointing off. up, not down. It looks like her dad. Dad, Gabrielle, stops by every day. He keeps apologizing. I wish he wouldn't. I'm not sure how I feel about my father right now. It's a mess. Dad, Gabrielle, stops by every day. That machine is all that stands between me and six feet under. It feeds my comatose body a fun cocktail of life-saving narcotics. Well, maybe a fun cocktail, but if they're life-saving, I would not complain. The latest and greatest in chemical life support. Without magical miracle machine, I'd be stiff and cold and probably all maggoty. Hmm, happy thoughts. The little engine that could keeps my brain ticking when the rest of me doesn't. That machine is all that stands between me and six okay, feet. Okay, I guess that's it for it feeds my comatose body the uh, fun little cocktail. snippet of bedroom we've got here. Narcotics. So let's take a look at everything that's going on out here. Story time. This is not a part of story time we've seen before, I don't story think. Story time. I don't know how long I've been here. Six months? 
Nine? Storytime feels more real to me now than the waking world does. There's no end to it. It goes on like this forever. Mountains, valleys, endless plains. A sky full of stars, never changing. It's beautiful, but also so desolate and cold. Like a fairy tale of the dead. I guess you could say magnificent desolation. Story time. The place where all stories begin and end. Including my. Da 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 da. <laughs> okay. No need to get silly, Zoe. What's here? Spirits. People dreaming. Trapped inside their own night terrors. They've been using the dream machine too much, and now they can't get out. That seems like a side effect they should be putting on the box. I can free them, but there are more of them every day. I can't keep up any longer. This has to stop. Well, I guess we better do something about it then. Seems like we are able to, from what the narration was saying. thing is, I am pretty sure that this was different the first time I played it. I don't really know what happened here, if they changed it in a later update. But I think there was more to do here. So I'm a bit confused about that. I haven't been able to find a definite answer. Someone's having a nightmare about a dying child. That must be absolutely terrifying. This is a dream. Your baby will be okay. Wow, that's pretty convenient. You can just end people's nightmares like that. Why won't you help me? What the hell? They're being followed. Those are the people we just helped, aren't what they? What are you doing? Stop following me. Turn around, go back, wake up. I said stop. I can't help you anymore. You're on your own now. Please, help me. They do not seem to be listening, so... Guess we better move on to the next dream. She's all alone. I know that feeling. Yep, yeah, looks like she's being excluded You're not from the alone. group. There are people out there you can connect with, but you need to stop using the dream machine first. It's not helping you. Well, hopefully they'll take that advice, but it just seems to be adding to the number of people that are following us, which... I don't know, it's kind of creepy. Why won't you help me? Trapped, oh, wow. burned alive. That's a terrifying nightmare. I'd say that again. That's probably the worst. Don't you can't leave. Please save me. There's no fire, and you're not dying. It's only a nightmare. You've been using the dreamer too much. It's messing with your head. Well, lucid dreaming sounds pretty oh, fun, but if that's what's going to end up doing, all the time. naked, exposed, it's worse than it sounds. This isn't real. No one can see you. You'll wake up soon, and everything will be fine. But you should stop using the dream machine, or the nightmares will continue. Um, somebody seems to be having a problem with their closet over there. We're building up quite the following here, For aren't we? For sake, people, go away! What are you doing? Stop following me. Turn around, go back, wake up! You need to save me! I don't think we can actually do anything with them. Don't go. Don't no. leave me. Don't leave. Stop. You can't leave. Don't go. Hopefully they'll go away. They'll find their own way out. This dream is different. It's more persistent. And the dreamer... It's a child. Oh, great. I'll need to go in and untangle it. I guess we do. Stop. Don't come any closer. Leave me be. There are too many of you. I can't say... 
I can't help everyone. Just go away. Whoa. That worked, I guess. But now we are in this dream. And that does not look like a very happy dream, does it? Let's see what we can do for this dreaming girl. Talk to her would be a good start. Don't make a sound. It will hear you. Who will? The monster in the closet. It will hear you and eat us both. She's scared enough already, poor girl. I need to be careful. In this game, every time you hover over a conversation choice, you'll get a little bit of insight into what the character is thinking, which is nice. It gives you a little bit more of a of an idea of what is actually going to happen when you choose a particular option. She's already scared, but she needs to understand how dangerous the dream machine is. I don't think She's that's the time already, for that right now. Let's reassure her. I promise mm. it won't hurt you. You swear? I swear. I won't let it. But you need to get back home. I can't find my way. The way back is through there. Through the wardrobe. I can't go in there. It will eat me alive. Not if we destroy it first. Don't worry. And whatever's in there, it's no match for me, I promise. Are you like a superhero? Something like that. What do you think of my costume? It's really cool. If you look closely, you could actually see the... The girl had the little leaf symbol on the front of her head that was the symbol of the dreamer. Let's see what we can do here. I've got a bunch of new symbols here, and this is where I'm kind of confused, because I know there were other dreams you had to help with before you got to this point. We can apparently, uh, besides our normal looking option, let's do that actually. Oh, she must be terrified. Poor girl. We have a few other options here. Mind, light, and time. Let's see what they do. She... she had a light. Oh, she dropped it. It rolled away. She doesn't know where it is. She won't go looking for the light herself. She's afraid of the slithering things in the dark. Hey, who can blame her? Oh, I guess we can read her mind. That's convenient. Oh, we can make her very bright, but that doesn't seem to accomplish much. And we can slow down time. Doesn't seem to affect the monster over there, though. How about the light bulb? Right. Why bother with lampshades when a creepy bear bulb can suffice? Of course, the creepier the better. This bedroom was designed to be as creepy as possible. Spooky by Ikea. Wait, Ikea still exists in the 21st century? Pain. Anger. Sadness. No, of course not. Don't be silly. It's just a light bulb. It's a very angry and sad light bulb, apparently. Oh, that light's too weak to have an effect on Mr. Great Old One. That's no good. And that doesn't accomplish anything. I guess we're going to have to deal with the monster itself. That's one disturbed wardrobe. I'm glad this is not my dream. I'd be absolutely terrified. It had to be tentacles. It couldn't be, I don't know, a dream about a wardrobe filled with bananas. Bananas? Sure. Could be terrifying, I guess. Bananas. That's the best you could come up with, Zoe. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cthulhu. Cthulhu who? <gasps> the horror! Yeah, you're going bonkers. Somebody had way too much fun writing all these lines. That's one disturbed wardrobe. I'm Let's glad this is not its mind, I guess. not peeking inside that thing's head. I've made that mistake in the past, never again. Or not. Can we drive him away with light, maybe? Light could work, but I don't think there's anything to draw on there. 
That thing is darkness through and through. It would need to come from somewhere else. Um, well, we already saw that we could make the light bulb brighter, but it didn't work. We could make the girl brighter, but it didn't work. But reading the girl's mind, we saw that she had a light, but dropped it somewhere. Well, I don't see it anywhere, but underneath the bed seems like a logical option. Oh, it's too dark. Can't see anything under there. Oh. Well, that's helpful. Mm. Batteries will need replacing soon, but no, nothing in there. Well, Bingo. We can turn it on remotely. That's helpful. Bringer of light. Emissary of electricity. The mighty torch. It's the flashlight. Or torch, if you will. We can examine things. Look at them in detail. And there's a cute kitty on the side of this one. Torch. Flashlight. Beacon. Yep, that about sums it up. I'm quickly running out of ideas. It's a torch. It projects a light beam. It's used to penetrate darkness, like a broadsword of light. Fighting. Darkness dragons. Oh, I give up. <laughs> Apparently, Zoe is not good at describing a flashlight. Let's use it. And turn it on. And walk around. Uh, oh. It ran away. It had to be tentacles. It couldn't be, no. I don't know, a dream about a wardrobe filled with bananas. Uh, hmm. It's hiding. Stupid, smart tentacle thingy. It's too quick for me. Well, it just so happens we have a way to slow down time. There we go. Yeah, it's working. Cool. That is much no, better. Don't get too close. It will take you. You're safe now. Thank you. But I don't know how to get back home. I don't know where my mummy is. She's on the other side of the wardrobe waiting for you. It's... It's scary. Come on. Do you use a dream machine? Mum makes me. She says it keeps me occupied. Then she has time to play with hers. The next time That's she horrible. does that, you need to say no. She won't like that. Maybe not, but you tell her it's dangerous, that it gives you nightmares. I could tell Daddy. He doesn't live with us, but I talk to him all the time. You do that. Now go through and you'll wake up again. Thank you. What's your name? Zoe. And remember, no dream time. I might not be able to find you again. This has to stop. Indeed, it does have to stop. Hey, I recognize that guy. It's the man we were telling our story to before in story time. I guess we'll see what he wants in the next video.